Hi, I'm Kenneth, and this is the Unspeakable Vice podcast, where we talk about talking about sex. Sex is a dirty word, a taboo, something that just isn't talked about, and we're going to dig into why. So today's episode is kind of a preview. I'm going to give you an overview of what we're about, uh, where the name came from, what kinds of content you can look forward to. So to start, just a definition. What do we mean by sex? Uh, Part of the problem about communicating about sex is that the definitions are kind of vague. Sex can be a physical act, right? It can be a biological characteristic, uh, male, female, etc. Or it can be an identity, uh, heterosexual, homosexual, uh, intersex, whatever. Um, And so in this podcast, we're going to explore all of those definitions of sex. We're going to look at all the ways sex and sexuality inhabit and define our lives. Um, So these different meanings are kind of unrelated, right? One sexual biology doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the sexual acts one engages in. Um, But I think there is an overlap, and I'm, I'm interested particularly in that overlap. In other words, how these different aspects of sex and sexuality relate to each other. After all, it's not a coincidence that we lump them all under the term sex. And uh, I think one of the relationships is the fact that they're all a little bit hard to talk about in a similar way. So, but before we get into all that, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Kenneth Gorley. Um, I started a career uh, years ago in internet services, software, and project management. But after a few years, those plans got derailed when I was sent to prison for sex crimes. Um, And in coming to understand those circumstances uh, that led me there, I realized that much of my own difficulty around sex and sexuality was shame and an inability to speak honestly about my feelings and thoughts. Um, I realized that this wasn't just me, but this is a, a societal problem, a cultural problem. So I decided to refocus my life and start a new career in academics and work toward understanding and prov- improving the problem of social repression of sexuality of our society. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm a graduate student at Wayne State University, and I'm the host of this podcast. So the Unspeakable Vice podcast seeks to answer these questions. First, why is it so difficult to have an honest conversation about sex? Sex comes up all the time in conversation, sort of, right? But it's often a joke or an innuendo, uh, a hushed rumor, or it's just kind of weird. So we're going to look at some of the things behind this. I mentioned shame, uh, embarrassment, prejudices. There's a pressure to be normal or to fit in. Uh, For example, a husband might not feel comfortable telling his wife that he felt an attraction to someone else. Uh, Someone who thinks that he might be gay could have a hard time questioning his identity around his peers. Um, So those are just a couple examples. We'll look at uh, where these feelings of shame come from in our culture. And uh, to build on that, how do our relationships and our well-being suffer when we have trouble communicating our sexual desires, beliefs, and identities. So think about that husband. Part of his uh, thought life becomes hidden from his wife, and uh, he might become more and more withdrawn from that relationship. His wife might wonder what he's hiding and even suspect him of cheating or something, something far worse than what it is. Or that person questioning his sexuality, uh, what a disadvantage he must be at that he's unable to work through uh, these questions and these thoughts that he's having with anybody else. He, he ends up having to navigate his thoughts and feelings by himself. So those are some of the, uh, the issues that we're going to dig into. We're also going to look at uh, people who have found ways to be successful in their communication despite these pressures. So how have they overcome uh, these, these social pressures to keep quiet? Um, and what are they doing? So not every episode will have an interview, Uh, But I do look forward to finding great people to talk with who have interesting stories, both from academic studies and uh, from their own personal experiences with sex communication. So finally, uh, let's talk about the name. Where did the name come from? The unspeakable vice. Well, uh, not that long ago, maybe 100 or 200 years ago, uh, some academic professors 
coined the term the unspeakable vice of the Greeks. This was sort of a euphemism for talking about homosexuality or sodomy. Um, before that, in medieval law, there was references to that detestable, unmentionable, and ignominious vice. Again, referring to probably sodomy. Um, today, some sexual deviances are so awful that uh, we call them unthinkable, especially when it comes to crime, unthinkable crimes. Um, so, but the pattern here is all this idea that deviant sex is so horrible and disgusting that it can't even be spoken about. And so we can only sort of mention it, you know, that which not, may not be named. Um, sensitive ears must be protected from such terrible things. Um, and, and so we're talking uh, specifically about deviant sex, but the thing is that since it's not defined, since we can't talk about it openly, uh, it could be whatever you want it to be. So that, that horrible thing is, is left to your imagination. But my pos position on this is that um, no sex is vanilla enough that it's allowed to be talked about openly. Uh, some things might be easier to discuss than others, but it's all still veiled in this secrecy, innuendo, euph euphemism. Um, so, so I think it's appropriate to talk about all of sex in this uh, discussion. So we're here to talk about the unspeakable. And the primary reason that it's unspeakable is that it's considered a vice, a shortcoming, a character flaw. Hence, the unspeakable vice. So this is uh, what we're doing, and I hope you look forward to it. That's the end of this introduction for now. Um, and uh, we can I don't have a schedule yet exactly of uh, when the first episode is going to come out, but it'll be very soon. So look forward to that, and uh, I'll see you then. Thanks.